of that nature. Wrap that stuff up. It's laying on the floor of your boat tied down. When you pick it up, all you've got to do is pull some Velcro and you're good to go. Uh, but yeah, sit down, go over your equipment the night before. You should know your game plan. You should know your approach. What are you planning on throwing first? What baits do you think you want tied on? And if it's something like you're throwing a weightless soft plastic, okay, fine, tie your hook on. Now, in some applications, guys are going to have a pretty good idea what you're throwing just based on the style hook you have tied on. But tie your hook on. Don't put your color on. That's fine. That takes all of two seconds. But tie everything on. And that way you can check and double check your knots. Check and double check your line. Do all that stuff the night before. My ritual, weather permitting, is normally to grab all my gear. My half ton has a full tonneau cover on it. I grab all my gear, all my rods. They go out, they get laid across the top of my tonneau cover. My tailgate comes down. You know, my tackle boxes, the, you know, I carry four to a, a tournament. Plus some stock odds and ends in my bag. But my four Plano boxes that I'm going to use for that event, I sort through my, my Plano boxes. I figure out which ones I want based on what body of water I'm fishing. My four boxes get laid out across my tailgate. Anything that I need. I, I pick out my first assortment of baits, depending on how many rods I'm taking with me. Normally five or six. I take out my five, you know, five or six baits. Lay them out. Make sure they're new baits. Make sure the hooks are good. And I'll make sure everything's sharp. Pick out which is going on which rod, depending on, once again, depending on application. Get everything, you know, get everything set up that way. <coughs> Excuse me. It's, uh, it, 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 it comes down to, again, ritual, routine. You know, normally I'm sitting on a stool at the tailgate of my half ton with, you know, normally a beer sitting on the tailgate beside me. And one rod at a time. Check the first few feet of line. Make sure everything's good. If I find bad line, cut it off. If I have to re-spool, that's my time to re-spool. Because there's no no time pressure. I'm sitting around in the evening, sitting on my, you know, sitting in my yard having a beer. It's not, it, it's not a, a hectic situation. It's not a pressure-filled situation. Tie everything up. Get, you know, get get all your baits tied up. Put your, your, your bait gloves on, that sort of thing. If that's what you choose to use, get everything ready. If you're the back of the boat angler and you're meeting your partner in the morning, put your stuff in your car, your truck, whatever you're traveling in. Know, finish off your beer make sure you have and go make yourself a checklist if you have to get a pen and a piece of paper make yourself a checklist you know rain gear trust me and i speak from experience nothing is going to make a tournament more miserable than forgetting your rain gear and needing it you know i did it last year i looked at the wrong weather forecast i looked at the weather forecast for a sunday instead of a saturday went down to Lake Poker Moonshine, Maine, and yes, it is a huge difference when you're catching fish and going to be in the, you know, right where you, you know you've got a bag that is going to contend for the win, which luckily for me, we were doing, but at the same time, man, if we hadn't been catching fish and keeping moving, it would have been a long, cold day. So, make yourself a checklist. Rain gear, lunch, water in particular, especially if the sun's going to be out. Make sure you stay hydrated. Uh, you know, you want whatever you want for your tackle. Make sure you've got the right rods, all this sort of stuff. Make sure you have everything you need. Don't, uh, don't leave anything to chance, because if you leave stuff to chance, you will forget stuff, and that can be the difference between a good day and a bad day at a tournament. So, like I said, make yourself a checklist. Rain gear, tackle, rods, lunch, anything else you think you're going to need. If you have your own, uh, say, your self-inflating uh, PFD or something of that nature. Uh, 
know, get uh, get yourself ready. The less you have to think about come Saturday morning, the better it's going to be for everybody. Oh, where was I? I had to take a little pause in recording to stop and pay a toll. The joys of recording while working. Uh, but no, get everything ready, like I said, Saturday or Friday night. The more you have prepared, the less you have to think about come Saturday morning, the better off you're going to be. If it's, you know, if you're, if it's your boat or you have access to the boat that night, put your gear in the boat. That way it's already there. It's one less thing you have to think about. If you don't have access to the boat, if it's, you know, your partner and he's bringing it, well, like I said, put it in your car, put it in your truck, whatever you're traveling in. Everything you need, right down to change of footwear, whatever you think, based on weather conditions. Uh, now, do remember, if you're the guy at the back of the boat, you're going to have limited space. You know, most guys, rule of thumb, for most people, four Plano boxes. And you, you all know what I mean by, by the Plano boxes. A good rule of thumb for a back of the boat angler is four Plano boxes and or a bag that would accommodate four Plano boxes. You know, I have a spider wire bag that holds four Plano boxes, plus it's got pockets on the side and that sort of stuff that I can carry extra spools of line in. I can carry, you know, a, vari a, a, a small variety of, you know, some scents and just different odds and ends that I'm going to use without you know, w without having to carry every piece of tackle and fishing related supplies that I own. You know, same as the number of rods. You know, I normally carry five or six. We can put comfortably <clears throat> about a dozen in the rod locker on Jason's boat. I think we had 13 or 14 in it last year, but a couple of them were spares that had no reels on them. So, you know, obviously don't take up as much space. But comfortably, rods with reels, I think we can put a dozen. So we normally bring five or six each. Uh, and we're, you know, we're good to go. There's not a huge amount of, you know, wasted space or extra. We, we, we utilize the storage to the best of our ability. But we don't want to overdo it so there's overflow. So there's rods that have to stay out on the deck all the time. Uh, you know, there's stuff that we're going to be tripping over, extra tackle boxes or bags that are going to be in the way. Efficiency. From Friday night right through Saturday, the more efficient you can make yourself, the more productive you're going to be on the water. So I know there's a lot of seasoned tournament guys out there, and a lot of this is probably fairly redundant. You know, this is all stuff that you do anyway. Well, for the new guy... This is information that is valuable. You know, this is important to them because if they've never done this before and they don't have the opportunity or they've never had the opportunity to really speak to somebody who's done it any amount before, it's advice that's valuable to them. I know I wish I had had... I, I Don't get me wrong. I had some great advice going into my first couple tournaments. Uh, but the more extensive it can be you know the better off someone is so if you can have yourself organized then you'll be in good shape like I said I wanted to make this a little bit shorter today so I am going to wrap up if anyone has any questions especially you guys here in New Brunswick uh, that are gearing up to fish Harvey Lake for the first time uh Oh, one more thing. Do your best to have some knowledge of the body of water. If, especially if it's your first time coming out. Excuse me. It can be dangerous. And I mean, you guys have heard me preach a lot about safety over the last few weeks. And I would be going against the grain kind of thing if I didn't mention it today. <coughs> Just a few days away from <coughs> our kicking off our tournament season. If you don't know the water, don't run hard. We did it last year, Harvey Lake. We didn't know the water. Jason had been there once. I had never been there. Uh, 
we drew a great starting number. We drew number six. We didn't know the water. You know, we were running a slower boat compared to a lot. We were running a 17 foot with a 90. There was two 25s and two 50s all around us. So we opted for safety's sake. We pulled out of the way, let everybody go. Then we went. And we had a number of anglers come up to us afterwards and thank us. But I wasn't looking for a thank you, you know, that was considered a, a, a sportsman-like move, and that's great. Guess what? I was worried about getting either A, hitting a rock because we didn't know the lake, or B, getting our asses run over because there was a 250 breathing down our necks and we're running a night in a, in a narrow channel lake. If it's a wide open river, go for it. That 250 will find his way around it. But in a body of water that's narrow, limited, limited lanes to run, opt for safety. If it means you've got to let somebody else go ahead of you when normally you shouldn't have, opt for safety. It's better for everybody. Ladies and gentlemen, I hope a bunch of people got out fishing this past weekend. I hope to see a pile of people out fishing in Harvey Lake this Saturday. Before I go, I do have to remind you, NBSFA on Twitter, NB, at NBSFA on Twitter, at NBSFA on Periscope. This Saturday, 4 p.m. Atlantic time, so 3 p.m. Eastern, the first ever live weigh-in broadcast for the NBSFA will be streaming on Periscope. Check it out, 4 p.m. Atlantic time on Periscope. That's 3 p.m. Eastern, at NBSFA. Check it out. Uh, let us know what you think. It'd be great to, to see the, the viewer numbers climbing up there as uh, people check out what's happening in bass fishing here in New Brunswick. I expect to see a field of over 40 boats this Saturday, so it should be a great time. Ladies and gentlemen, once again, I am Donald Patterson. This has been NB Bassin for another week. Thank you again, Fish Bum Outfitters, Southern Yankee Baits, War Dog Lures, Northern Michigan Outfitters, to my wife and my son. Thank you most of all. Ladies and gentlemen, in life, on the, on the water, set the hook, keep those lines tight.